Good morning. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Thank you, Shapes. Welcome back to another episode of SJU on Fandom Entertainment. We have got a bunch of big stories today. Uh, today, NBC officially fired their first shots, and that's streaming was. What they say by the Bell sequel, a new Battlestar series, and more. Plus, we're going to help John Favreau create the perfect 2019 Star Wars holiday special and swipe right on Tinder's new series? Question mark. You heard all that correctly, so stick with us. I have got a great group of panelists today. We've got Ed, we have got Emma, we have got Dan, I'm Danielle. Good morning. Story number one, NBC Universal streaming service gets a name via NBC Universal. Are you ready for another bump, 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 streaming wars update? Woo, woo, woo. There it is. There Extra, extra. <laughs> hey, did you hear about these peacocks? Over there? <laughs> I just really love the name. Yep, just peacock. We're just going to go for it. I mean, granted, that has been NBC's logo for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But what, why would you name your streaming service after a bird? Uh, you know, I get peacocks, they strut. I sure. guess this is them sure, sure. Uh, just, just strutting out. At least it didn't have plus at the end of it. <laughs> That's just a peacock plus. Oh, peacock yeah. plus, yuck. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, uh, is I this... work for the PP. -pee. <laughs> like, oh, no. Uh, is this a better or worse name um, than the name Quibi? Is it pronounced better. Quibi? 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 Better. Better. Automatically because I know how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, yes. Because right. it. it's an actual word. Sure. Yeah. Being an actual word helps. Yeah. And Quibi, that is that is real. It's spelled uh, Q-U-I-B-I, -I, and that is the upcoming streaming service from Jeffrey Katzenberg, focused on short-form webisode-type program. Oh, so that's so YouTube by uh, Carpool <laughs> Karaoke at the end. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. never let it go. <laughs> <laughs> never. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> They're never gonna let it go. Nope. No. <laughs> I'm taking that back to the writer's room all day. <laughs> all right, and in story 1.5, Peacock has announced a lot of shows. Um, the this is it, the phrasing on this is interesting in the script. The inevitable return of Saved by the Bell. Was what? it? No. Was it inevitable? <laughs> okay, I am not. Listen, not two weeks ago, we were literally sitting at this table. It was all the same people except maybe not Ed. Mm. And we were having this exact conversation <laughs> about do we want a Saved by the Bell sequel? And we unanimously said no. no. Right, well, let's, okay. No, no, no. I, I was here and I didn't contribute oh, to the man. conversation <laughs> because I didn't. Didn't care. So yeah, so it was like it I was wasn't like here. It was, like it, was, here. it was exactly like that. All right. Well, uh, we we were trying to think of what that possible reboot would look like or, or sequel, and yep. oh boy, they have told us um, Mario Lopez and Elizabeth Berkley are set to reprise their roles. Of course they are, yeah. as AC Slater and Jesse Spano. Um, it is from Thirty Walk writer Tracy Wigfield. Fingers were crossed until I heard this log line. <laughs> When California Governor Zach Morris gets into hot water for closing too many low-income schools. Those two parts of that sentence don't go together. <laughs> they don't, yeah. Exactly. That's like funny, funny, what? what? Too, what? Real, too real and sad. Yeah, too, too real, real and sad. Uh, you know, I'm uh, sorry, but continue. Enemy of the people, Zach Morris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a hater of the downtrodden. He proposes to send the affected students to the highest performing schools in the state, oh including Bayside High. <laughs> the influx of new students gives the overprivileged Bayside kids a much needed and hilarious dose of reality. Is oh, it? Is, okay. What? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my question is then, is Governor Zach Morris doing this because he wants those underprivileged kids to get a better education. Like, that's my question. Oh, is that he finally turns his scam powers for good? Yeah. Well, I, I would love to interpret it that way, but I, I would like to think that Zach Morris, a, a privileged trash person, <laughs> grew up to be a privileged trash person. Well, that, and that then part did checks something. Out. Yeah, yeah. 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 And him, then he, him being the governor, yeah. I completely buy that. Right, right. Oh, yeah, I'm on board. Yeah. Totally, <laughs> because, you know, politicians need not be qualified. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what hijinks yeah. they got up to in high school, full no. stop. He's a rich con <laughs> artist, of course, he's yeah. elected governor. Yeah. Right, so that being the case, he does some he does, does some scythe-like swath through the hood and ruins schools, you know, like Godzilla's tipping over Legos, mm -hmm. and then 
has to make up for that classic Zach Morris mistake. Maybe he stops time and consults the audience as to what he should but, do. Oopsie doopsie, all these <laughs> underprivileged kids know about the <laughs> breakfast like, program. Yeah, kind of hurt, though. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing, this idea that he... Uh, but I, I just think it's a mistake, though. Look, look, if you're in charge of stuff on some real stuff, let's talk about it. If you're really in charge, there are some little check mark you make on a piece of paper. That's 5,000 jobs. That's true. So that's that true. could have happened to him. He's he's notoriously late to meetings. It's like, oh, God, I woke up in the morning and he misses his bus. <laughs> And he comes and he checks the wrong box. The next thing you know, all these schools are closed. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> it said lunch. She thought it said lunch. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They've, already, they've gotten this all wrong. All right. This is just from a save by the purists. They've yeah. gotten this all wrong to Same. begin with. Jesse Spano would be the governor I know. of California. Well, at least his She's advisor. She's the Ivy Leaguer. She went to Columbia. Yeah. She's the one that would come back home and run for office and do it. Zach would right. have gone to like Wall Street or True. like he would have started Napster Unless, or something. Um, yeah, 100%. But unless they're trying to make a, a scathing commentary on the actual political state of the world of, again, politicians need not be qualified to hold positions of power. They just yeah, need to be popular. Charming. Popular for no damn reason. Yep. Like having whole shows built around them when every other character is more interesting. I don't know. <laughs> stuff, like, again, stuff like that happens. Jesse went to Columbia. Her uh, no, whole I, arc was dude, about I'm getting out of this. None you. of this makes sense. But yeah. It's not that it doesn't make sense. It's that you could have made it make sense, but it already doesn't make <laughs> but, sense. Okay. Well, and, and on top of that, the only confirmed cast members you have are... <laughs> Elizabeth Berkeley and Mario yeah. Lopez. So I'm. I'm Did they the, say Mark Paul Gosselaar? I mean, no, I guess he's, he's not got, even well, gonna be. He's gotta be attached, I right? Mean, I, they haven't announced it. We do know that he is on the Blackish spinoff Mixed Ish, which is a terrible name because Mixed is already an Ish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it makes me angry every time I see it. But he is gonna be playing the dad. Um, he we, I, there was a whole thing because originally it was gonna be one of the guys from Workaholics, and then Zach came in. So yeah, he, we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Zach, stop time at the audition. Push that guy out. <laughs> Set like, I want to make out me. with the tr fake Tracy Ellis Ross mom. <laughs> yes. right. So, yeah, we don't even know. This whole thing is predicated on a mistake that Zach Morris made, and we don't even know if we have Zach Morris. Because you can't recast him. No, 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 no. no. There's no, no recasting no, no, Zach no, no, Morris. No. But also, I would like to say, like I said, I'm not trying to movie fight Dan, but I, <laughs> I, I think that the reason why Jesse Spano is probably like something lower than what you would have imagined is because that's what happens. All these yeah. super high achievers, and they're just like, yeah, oh, gotta study for this test, popping all these Ritalin, oh God. And they get into school, and they burn out, and bad stuff happens a lot of the time. They were caffeine or, pills, number one, number two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> to your point, Ed, but but you know, in a in a bleaker reality, that it's true. Like you do have all these overachievers, and it's not even a burnout thing. It's like, a, you know, you can have all this education and still get jobs that you're way. I got a lot of jobs that you're way overqualified. <laughs> this is the show where a kid got hit by lightning and became That's super true. smart and then created That's a true. robot. I <laughs> don't robot. need a dose of good reality injected <laughs> into Saved Save by the Bell. You don't want grim and gritty no. Saved by the Bell. No. This is ridiculous. No. This is Alan the guy Moore. Can violate the laws of space and time. I don't need to hear about why the political system failed the kids at Bayside. This is Alan this is Moore's insanity. Saved by the Bell. Alan this Moore's Saved by the Bell coming crazy. this June. <laughs> This is nuts! <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just like, I mean, what are we doing? I anymore? mean, already the oh. entire the entire premise of it of like we we gotta give these Bayside kids a dose of reality. Like, <laughs> also, uh, hey Dan, yes, the writer, she has an Emmy. Good for her. Right? <laughs> I don't. It's fine. It's, it's okay. A lot of people have it's Emmys. A, yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> Thirty Rock. <laughs> Thirty Rock was a great show. I'm happy that they this wanted Emmy for writing Thirty. How many? Yeah, this is the why real, I have hope. The real Rock question is: me hope. Yeah. the Thirty Rock thing gives me hope. Now, if they were pitching me a Thirty Rock ish series where Zach Morris was now like the principal of Bayside High, like yes. I'm in. I'm in for that. Of and again of like hijinks of oops somehow I ended up the principal of this school, <laughs> like if we're talking more on like a micro level because that's what Saved by the Bell was it was literally just about Bayside High like we have it was just in this table pitch two better ideas yes. <laughs> than they've than they've announced I'm a hard no on this a hard no from Dan I'm yeah. a hard no on this all right well I gotta call the executives on my big ass cell phone uh, <laughs> Dan doesn't like it. <laughs> we need care. to we need to rethink it. We need to, we need to, 
Well, from Bayside to Battlestar, I could li- this could be the whole show. We have to move on eventually. Um, so uh, the creator of Mr. Robot will be bringing us a new version of Battlestar Galactica. Um, this will be the third Battlestar series following the original 1978 NBC series and the 2003 reboot from Ron Moore that aired on Sci-Fi. Now, he did, because people were worried, like, is this going to be a reboot? What is it? He did clarify um, that it is a new story within the mythology but we don't quite know what series. I think we're all assuming it's the 2003 series. It's over. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. <laughs> it ended un pretty uh, pretty definitively. Yeah, defi- yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Was it had a fairly definitive ending? I'm assuming uh, it'll be just a different ship. They did that too. Yeah, <laughs> they already did that. Too. They did already do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're subtitling. A moment. I was like, we're subtitling this episode uh, of SJU, uh, Dan ruining Dan's his life. life. Yeah. Dude, it'd be crazy if like you went crazy and your scanner head exploded while I was checking a text under the table. <laughs> like, what's the, this is the dichotomy of the show. Yeah. No, I, you know what? I, me personally, I just want to weigh in because I'm literally going to weigh out. Um, mm-hmm. I don't care, and yeah. I know this will fail. Capital. Uh, K, no, that this will fail. So it doesn't really affect me. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's one of the few times when they've taken this concept of universe and mythology like way too far. And and if indeed it it, it works and it's great, it's going to have to go right. Because it could be good and still fail with this conception. Everything Dan's talking about Mm -hmm. is what everybody thinks when they think of Battlestar Galactica. They took Battlestar Galactica out of the trash like Chappie (laughs) and, and wiped it off and made it great and made it the yeah. senator, <laughs> you know what I mean, and now they want to talk about something else about it. It's just like it seems like a backward step, regardless of what they do. Yeah, I'm galactic. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm galactic. I'm galactic. Um, so. There are other announcements, too. I, I, we've got kind of a list of them because we can't run down all of them. Um, so if you have a one on here that you're particularly looking for, go ahead and shout that out. I'm going to say right now, I don't know how much this affects anyone who doesn't live in, uh, in <laughs> yes. the Los Angeles area or who didn't listen to you know Moby in the, the late 90s. <laughs> Angeline, a limited series starring Amy Rossum as the woman LA residents know for being famous for being famous thanks to her billboards around town and whose real life background is pretty surprising. For for those of you who don't know, she is the mold by which Trisha Paytas has like be, turned herself into. This woman for no other reason bought billboards of herself all over. She drives a bright pink car. You can get pictures taken with her in the car. You can buy a t-shirt, which I'm hearing is not as pleasant of an experience as I would like it to be because you have to buy it directly. Um, this, her life story is amazing and I am fascinated. Like when people talk about those Hollywood weirdos, Angelina's who they are talking about and God bless her for existing. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a, a n- new comedy? Mm-hmm. New? Is that the word? New? 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 I've How never do you heard pronounce that. that? Anyway. Does it start with a K? For, called uh, Rutherford Falls, yeah. which is created by uh, Mike Schur. Yeah, Schur, I, who yeah. Uh, has created some really good shows. I was going to call oh, that so. one out as well because I yeah. like everything Mike Schur has done for the most part. Really yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. There you go. I love the good points. Yeah, yeah. To two people that I, I like collaborating. Yeah. That's kind of what we have to go on right now, and I think that's quite enough. Um, and then also, of course, uh, a Punky Brewster sequel series with Soleil Moon Fry returning as Punky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't do voices, Joe Star. Um, and then Jada Pinkett Smith in the comedy Straight Talk from Rashida Jones, Dr. Death, based on the True Crime podcast. Yep. Um, well, can, I, can I just say one thing? Yes, please. What is up with our obsession with murder in our ears? Because, <laughs> because pot, crime podcasts are empirically the most popular podcast. Yeah. So it's a very intimate experience to listen to a podcast. You have people literally inside your head reverberating, mm-hmm. making mm-hmm. their images. Why are we obsessed with listening to murder in that fashion? I understand some of the stats, but I'm talking to two women. Women really like it the yeah, most. No, yeah. Women dig it the most. Because it's part of your reality, unfortunately. So yeah. what is that? What I is think that? that is, I think that is some of what it is, is that as a woman, like it is part of your reality. And also it's just... It is confronting the fact that these really awful things yes. happen in this world and 
and processing it in a way that is palatable, I think, is what it boils yeah, down to. It, it's that thing of like, you crack jokes or else just scream. Right. <laughs> yeah. So right. it, it's very much like that. Um, I've always wanted to be Batman. Mm hmm. And that gives me a chance to play a detective. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, because there, there are a fair number of true crime podcasts nowadays that nowadays that are dealing with cold cases. Yep. Yeah. Um, and with the intent of getting those stories out there and bringing attention to these people's, you know, who haven't been able to get the closure, mm -hmm. like the families of the victims and things like that. So there is, I think, a lot of good that comes out of this true crime obsession that we yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. I would like we I, Mara and I watched the staircase and like within. Yeah. We were like looking up facts about owls. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. that, it was, like, that we case is Oh, nuts. I want a hoot hoot, but that is so inappropriate. Yeah, no, that, yeah. is, that is very no, inappropriate. No, no, no. Possible outcast from Owl Nation there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I just I just wanted to give that some some breathing room here because yeah. like that's totally true. And this is the first evidence of this bleeding into regular media. Right. To me, mm -hmm. you know, like a big. Obviously, we're obsessed with crime shows, but like this is like a true crime podcast that's become a television show. I think right. it might be a first. Yeah. Uh, the my favorite murder girls are kicking themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, on top of that, Peacock. That just sounds so weird to say. Peacock also announced that they will have exclusive streaming rights to Parks and Rec. Um, so bye bye Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Prime, along with the already announced and more popular than ever The Office, which is moving to the Peacock when Netflix deal finishes in 2021, and of course. NBC's Bonnie Hammer, chairman of Direct to Consumer Digital Enterprises, did say it is my goal and hope, Dan, cover your ears, that we do an office reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Money. The office already is they, a reboot. They rebooted it once against all odds, it turned out to Correct. be. Correct. Uh, I mean,. Yeah, this extremely British comedy. Somehow, yeah, translated. Translated because I don't know if y'all have ever seen uh, the pilot of the American version of the IT crowd that oh, they decided I sure to do. Did. Uh, oh boy, oh, it's not bad. It is. That's bad. That's invite friends over, sit on the couch, Simpson style, uh -huh. and watch it. Bad. Yes, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. 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 Awful. And there's good people in yeah, it. Yeah, it's Joe McHale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is in it? Well, yeah. Um, Richard Iowati is still in it, playing That's the same right. character. Which is weird. I yeah. know. So, yeah. And then Catch who the girl in oh, it? Oh yeah. Oh my God, I can I, picture I, her. She's blonde. Uh, don't remember. Anyway, yeah, it actually has like not, a really good cast, but it's just not when they good. do those one and one, like that's why a lot of those first couple episodes for me of The Office stumbled because they were just doing one yes. one things. Mm -hmm. well, but, just because they clear. Just because they clear. Exactly. <laughs> like once, again, it's a good cast. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, well they also did a, um, an, an Americanized version of Peep Show, and, oh. and that pilot never uh, failed to launch. Yeah. Like, they twice. also tried yeah. to do Spaced McGee. Yes. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you know what that reminds me of? This type of stuff reminds me of you know in zombie movies there's always that jerk that wants to keep his wife alive in a room oh, you know what yeah. I mean and, and just like oh she's just knocking around in there with a mask on and then it gets knocked out for the next thing you know she's in the house biting everybody yeah, she's a zombie. you invited yeah, this yeah, doom yeah. into our home because you had this <laughs> weird love that was dead mm -hmm. and you should have let it go that's Reviving British shows and Americanizing them, in my personal opinion. <laughs> That's what it is. That's a pretty, pretty good allegory. That is right a good there. call. Yeah. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a ton of category t uh, catalog TV shows on Peacock. You could get your, your 30 Rocks, your Frasers, your Everyone Loves Raymond. It's a big, long list of a lot of stuff that both you and your dads will love. Um, Ooh, keeping psych up with the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my See, dad loves now that. You're in. <laughs> yeah, my dad loves that. Yeah, right? Now you're in. <laughs> All right. Oh, so. Um, there's a lot of programming there. Next to story 1.75. <laughs> Streaming laws, rage on. Oh, there we go. Seinfeld, big bangs, big deals. This is via THR and also THR. Um, Parks and Rec is not the only notable sitcom to get a new exclusive streaming home with two others getting massive deals. We've been kind of talking about this and around this all week. Uh, Seinfeld will be exclusively moving to Netflix in 2021 when its current deal on Hulu ends. Unlike Hulu, Netflix has locked down worldwide rights for the show from Sony, who are the ones who own the distribution rights, and will presenting it in 4K for the first time. Who asked oh, for this? Thank God. <laughs> I mean, Seinfeld. Seinfeld definitely, definitely not shot. 
not for 4K hey, I at wanna, all. I want to see those man hands in 4K. I want to see the soup Nazi in 4K. I, I want to see these things. Are they going to do the zoomed in version that they do on cable? Oh. oh. I don't, know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe oh. we'll see. We'll see. Oh. Listen, you got to see all those every individual nose hair. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> oh, that pirate shirt's gonna really uh, pop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the deal's for five years, said to be worth more than five hundred million of dollars. Jesus. <laughs> so <clears throat> Sony stands out right now as the biggest content owner to not be launching their own streaming service. At this second, we've, I think we've got some speculation they might be doing something. We know they're doing a lot of TV, and they've got that Lord and Miller deal. Um, does that yeah. make Seinfeld one of the last major free agent series left that can bring in this kind of money to an outside service like Netflix? I don't know. I, I, the thing about Sony is that Sony owns a lot of other entities that do have streaming platforms. Right. So I don't know. In a like lot, they had the PS4, a hundred percent. In a lot of ways, it would make sense for Sony to put all of those under one blanket umbrella deal, right. kind of like you can package Hulu and Disney Plus. Um, so it is. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I would be annoyed if Sony launched their own thing that didn't include all the other things they already own. You're right. Yeah. Right. Mm, yeah. Um, and yeah, this is yet another, the corporation is paying itself a lot of money um, so that all the profit participants will make money their contracts promise them for their original deals deal. Um, <laughs> for the, and this is for the Big Bang Theory. Um, also notable is that the Big Bang deal is for domestic streaming rights only, so Warner Brothers can still sell the show to other streaming services overseas. Um, their streaming rights will be locked down by Warner Media's HBO Max five-year deal that is said to be a record breaker, but I don't think we have the numbers. Uh, Big Bang was worth some real good. People really love that show. People, um, people like that show. Well, if people watched yesterday, these are the last of the buffalo skins. These are the last. Here we go again. No, for real. Like, the, these yeah. are the last of this particular thing that was quite valuable and quite plentiful before, and now there's no more, and they're fighting over the scraps of this. These heirlooms, basically, because th yeah. this is the last of those shows. I'm predicting that. Hopefully, I'm <laughs> prognosticating that. <laughs> Hopefully, because yeah, and it's a nostalgia repository. All of these things I, I wrote this down on my script. We're the nostalgia repository. Mm -hmm. That's what Seinfeld on Netflix is, and that's what Big Bang Theory is going to be for a group of dorks. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, people like it. It's great, but it, it's a group of people who like didn't really relate to nerd culture at all. Got to see through it and through an anth uh, uh, anthropomorphic or, or whatever, like a. Anthropolo anthropological lens, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. look at these ancient crummy bombs with this. <laughs> I don't understand they, this weird, weird view of it. And they sold it to people who never met a nerd in their life. That, you yeah, know what I mean? And my, always been my question about the Big Bang Theory because yeah. I've never met someone who's actually like anyone in the show who likes the show. It just seems to be people who aren't like the people in the show who think that people who are like that yeah. are all like that who like the show. Yeah. Am I wrong? Or was that impossible to follow? Parents love oh. Joe's, Joe's parents, parents love, love, parents love it. Okay. Well, it, it's like when Do they assume do... that that's what all of your conversations with us are like? Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> well, it's, like, it's like when people do a crappy impression of something. You know, yeah. I pack my car in the yard. Yeah, you think that they all sound like that. Because you've yeah. got a really it's reductive, Bostonians. dumb view. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you would had some more nuance, you'd know whether they were from way up here in Boston or way down there in Boston. You could do the different accents all the way down the train line or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. If you're actually listening. Thing. But people don't want to do that. People didn't want to do that at the genesis of, of that show. They didn't want to do that with nerd culture. They just yeah. wanted to be like, oh, uh, dorks, uh, no sex, uh, incels, but not dangerous. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, just, they just wrote it. They wrote it, you know. And it's like that isn't that isn't the people that they were talking about. But it, it appealed to people who were never going to meet those people. So who cares? Yeah. 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 Well, right. billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. A lot of people care. Yes, yeah. uh, just not us, but other people. Yeah. They yeah. monetized my life for billions of dollars. Better, <laughs> better than we have. Monetized yes. our lives way so, better uh -oh. than we have. So jokes oh, on us. Oh boy. We got one more streaming war update, and it's big. Oh boy. It's big. Uh -oh. One point eight five. Because Queeby. <laughs> saw the peacock shot today and they said, hold my Queeby. Uh-oh. <laughs> I still don't know what a Queeby is. Kiefer Sutherland is headed to Queeby, though, with a series remake of The Fugitive. The f oh, okay. They're shooting their shot, Dan. Dan, do you just want to go? <laughs> Dan. <laughs> 
They've tried this like two times it's in my life. Kiefer and Boyd television. Holbrook from Logan, and uh, uh, Stephen Hopkins, uh, who directed and produced Twenty Four, is uh, is overseeing it. So Queeby's still in it, baby. Queeby, discuss. Queeby. <laughs> Oh. Tim Daly. I'm just really go, hired Queeby, go, go. I was uh, at yeah. one point and mm-hmm. it failed yep. uh, because everyone was like, I didn't see the 60s show and the Harrison Ford movie was good, and that's all I need to know. Yep. Yeah. It's a guy chasing another guy. <laughs> yeah. Just make a show called A Guy Chasing, chasing Another, another Guy. That, yeah. And that is really what Starring this Kiefer all boils down to is that, like, I understand why they constantly are rebooting and remaking and giving these things these titles, but. Like, as you say, Dan, just make a just make a show about a guy on the run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're gonna hate the premise from another oh, what's guy. The premise? Give us the premise. Uh, faulty evidence because of tweet Fal- now confirm later journalism. Wait, no. faulty evidence due I'm to sorry, tweet this, now this, confirm later journalism. Are you this telling me that this is, is the about cancel Twitter? culture fugitive? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I made a couple terrible jokes on my podcast. Next thing I know, I'm a murderer. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> End the show now. Um. <laughs> I know he murdered his wife because that podcast was terrible. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put Dan out of. <laughs> we got this. Move on. Let's go ahead and like and subscribe, y'all. This is the day I lost my mind. I survived the last Jedi. I survived everything else, and this is it. This is this is it. This is it. This is the day. Oh, there's more. There's more to come. Like and subscribe. Um, the Dark Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Honest trailer is out. Speaking of people losing their mind, we almost lost Joe to Dark we Phoenix. Did. Um, so get your questions and thoughts in the comments section. We will talk about them in Honest Trailer Commentaries, which will be out tomorrow. There was also a new charting with Dan from yesterday. Yes. Uh, check that out if you have not yet. It has possibly the best charting with name that it's, Dan has ever given. It's my favorite thumbnail pun that we've ever done, <laughs> I have to say. It's quite fantastic. Thank you. All right, so September is Suicide Awareness and Prevention Month, so we wanted to spotlight an organization dealing with that problem with a highly at-risk portion of our population. Stack Up brings veterans and civilians together through a shared love of video gaming. Stack Up serves U.S. and allied service members, veterans, and civilians to assist in crisis intervention, suicide prevention, and issues concerning mental health through gaming and community. Visit stackup.org for more information. Now, we wanted to highlight one particular part of their program. The Stack Up Stop program is is a trained and certified specifically to assist in crisis intervention, suicide prevention, and issues concerning mental health. They provide peer-to-peer mental health support for veterans and civilians alike 24-7 through the Stack Up Discord server. If you want more information, click down below, and you can read more about what this organization's doing. Yeah. And organizations like this are so important, because let me just say, through secondhand experience, mm-hmm. um, the services that are offered uh, through our government are Awful oh, yeah. for veterans. They're oh, woefully terrible. inadequate. Mm-hmm. Woefully inadequate. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, God bless people like Stack Up and people that devote their time to yeah. do this. Yeah. Because the, the people that are supposed to be doing it, and it's not necessarily the people, it's just a bad system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a bad system that politicians trot out every four years to get applause lines and say that they're going to fix, and then they don't. Yep. Nope. Um, both parties. Yeah. Every single politician uh-huh. from both parties has said it for as long as I've been following politics that they're going to fix the VA and they get a nice applause line mm-hmm. and then they don't do it. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, people like Stack Up that actually uh, take action to 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 bridge this gulf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just they're doing great work. Yeah. Story number two. Jean Favreau wants to make a holly- holiday special. This is via Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> I love the holiday special, <laughs> says John Favreau. That, and I sounded exactly like him. Certain <laughs> sequences more than others. This was during an interview with Entertainment Tonight as th- this weekend's Saturn Awards. That's my generation. I loved the introduction of Boba Fett and that rifle he had. The animated piece still holds up. It's pretty cool. I draw inspiration from that. I would love to do a holiday special. I got to pitch that to Disney+. Plus. Uh, I do, you know, B. Arthur singing in a cantina. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. whatever, whatever was happening with itchy um it was so team this is our big chance we are going to pitch the perfect star wars holiday special right here right now Mm -hmm. because john favreau is definitely watching Mm -hmm. and he needs us yeah so give me music give me variety acts random side characters and i know you have been thinking about this all show yes 
Um, I, I, I'm making notes now. Come back to me. Okay. <laughs> All right, Emma. Do I'm you trying have to think of a good musical act well, that needs Seth to. Seth MacFarlane. 100% has to be in the Yeah, oh, Seth sure. MacFarlane is in the movie. Seth for MacFarlane sure. uh, it will be singing live action, not animated, live action yeah. musical number. Yes. He's part of the Fox Disney family now. Mm -hmm. You should, shouldn't be, have any trouble getting him. Yeah. But I feel like in the modern <laughs> incarnation, uh, Seth MacFarlane will be involved mm -hmm. in some capacity. Absolutely. And we do need to have a golden girl, Betty White. Have Betty White yeah, come I mean, in and do I something? I mean, I hate to say it, but she's our only option. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say? Would you say but she's not a, to take anything away yes. from Betty White? No, no, but I just mean that. Uh, unfortunately, I know, the, no, the but, laws but, of nature work. But would she's you? She's our would only you, remaining golden girl. Yeah. Would you say she's our only hope? Uh, it's, it's, it's totally true. Oh, but you know what? I think uh, okay. If we have, is that a Greek chorus, right? Is a, is Seth MacFarlane going to be the Greek chorus? I haven't really no, watched. No, yeah. well, there's but, no Greek chorus. There, you, right, there's like recurring. Yeah. Segment. Okay. But we I haven't have watched the special. So what, what, what's the structure of the oh, special? Oh my god. Oh, okay. What's the structure of the special? Have, it's basically Chewbacca's extended family. Yes. And it's, <laughs> and it's based in their like treehouse, and Chewbacca. Every once in a while, you will cut to a exhausted slash drug riddled uh, cast of the. The, the original Star Wars mm -hmm. movie. And they're trying to get Chewie home uh, for life, for day. life day. day. And so oh, there's like, there's like, like Christmas a, on his planet. There's yeah. like a cheap right. version of the Millennium Falcon cockpit with Harrison Ford and Chewbacca. They're like trying, it's like, all right, buddy, we're going to get you there. <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, Princess Leia has a song that she sings. She shows up. Yep. Um, but then, like, Chewie's grandpa, um, uh, uh, it's alluded to, um, uh, jerks off to holographic porn. Yep. And yep. he watches a uh, hologram of, uh, oh, who's. Who, who, yeah, uh, dude. Uh, oh, it's. Um, is it Dan? No, it's not Dan Warwick. It's not Dan Warwick. Anyway, there's a holographic musical number that happens. That's what's like very alluring. Oh, yeah. Uh, then you cut away. You, you watch on television somehow. There's like an Empire Television Network that cuts yes. away to the cantina on Moss Eisley where B. Arthur has a number. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's it's really based around Chewbacca's extended family yep. and a life day celebration. Yep. And then at the end, everybody shows up. Like the first ten minutes are just Wookies wookieing at each other. No like dialogue. Yeah. Subtitles or no subtitles. Okay. A robot chef. I got oh. it, guys. And what did Boba Fett do? Because but it's people got he just appears. An yeah. Interlude. That what? introduced Boba Fett. Yeah, he'd uh, never been in a Star Wars before. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first thing he shows up in is a holiday happens, special. I believe this happens in between New Hope and Yes. Yes. Because I've seen uh, still the of timeline it. of it is, yeah. is vague. Darth yeah, yeah. Vader is in it, but it's footage from the movie yeah. just with new dialogue. So okay, but here's my thing. All right. <laughs> wow. So, so if we're gonna do a, a Star Wars holiday special, I feel like you know there's all this there's all this people yelling right now on the internet in Star Wars fandom about. The redemption of Kylo Ren. Mm -hmm. So let's do a Christmas Carol with Kylo yes, Ren at the center yes, of it. I agree. A Kylo Carol. Yes, yes. a Kylo Carol. Okay, and that's it's, our and basis. It's, nice. That's our basis. That's our basis. And it is um, us, and, and it's a bunch of different characters trying to like reinstate. Uh, like the love of Life Day and, and humanity in Kylo huh. Ren. And okay. just BB-8, like he's the one taking <laughs> taking Kylo through all of these different, yes. introducing him yes. to all the ghosts. And so I think for the Ghosts of Christmas future, mm -hmm. that's the menace, that's the, the hooded one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. Palpatine. That's Emperor Palpatine, that's for Emperor sure. That's Palpatine. Yes. The Ghost of Christmas Present is like the jovial and the jolly one, right? Yeah. Hmm. What do you get for that? Well, you gotta get. I feel uh, like we, Dexter we, we, Jetster. We, well, we can deal all with like Force Ghosts. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you can. Yeah. He's serving it up. You know that what I mean? That is the best suggestion yeah. I've heard in a long time. Yes, yes Dexter, Dexter Jetster Jetster is one hundred percent the Ghost of Christmas is the Christ Present. Ghost of Christmas Present, and then Ghost of uh, Christmas Past. Uh, I mean, do we throw in like a Force Ghost Obi Wan? Ooh, I don't know if we're we'll go all the way back to Qui Gon Jinn. Oh man, that's oh. Tough. I feel like it's going to be like an even more minor character. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is it like like, like, uh, like no. uh, um, just one of Mace Windu? Like, is that like oh, yes, Mace Windu? Mace 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 he shows up and, and Ghost of Christmas Past has all that weird like chains and stuff, right? No, so no, he, that's Jacob Marley. Oh, Jacob Marley. Yeah, right. Well, okay. Well, he but Mace Windu still has like window shards in his back though. Like his ghost has window shards, like wings. You know, he's like, hey, this happened. Me, but I can help you. You know, Han Solo is Jacob Marley. Oh, totally. Oh. Harrison Ford. Oh, he's, yeah. He is. He comes up with like engine parts on. Yeah. Him, and, and he's still got the thing. <laughs> <And it's, laughs> he just yeah. hums. He's the yeah. only force goes. He just hums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So, and <laughs> Seth MacFarlane is the, I think he's the, the flashback. Yes. Yeah, he Seth like MacFarlane's is, in the flashback. Yeah, yeah, when oh. we flash back to okay. Kylo Ren okay, as, well, as a happy young man. Yes. Well, I, yes. I'd like to suggest something for the flashback. I was thinking, okay, it is John Favreau. So it's got to be Solo and Lando at all on a road trip to Space Vegas, and they're telling each other, you're so money, baby, and all this stuff, and it's about oh, it's yeah. about how his dad used to be cool, yeah. and he used to be a cool guy, and it, like Kylo's like watching his dad be a cool, regular guy, and he's like, oh, man, I, I that killed that dude. <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's, that's the, the animated yeah, yeah. portion. Also, I feel like we just, yes. I feel like Broom Kid that needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. yeah. He's yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> God bless us, everyone. <laughs> he's yeah. tidying he's up, he's like, yeah. he's like, uh, like Turbo from Breaking 2, just yeah. Yeah. That was breaking one, but yes. But yes. yes. I, I wish I didn't know that. Sorry. That's the ghost of Christmas present. Yeah. He's like looking at a frosted window and a broom <laughs> kid is sweeping the floor. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, dude, I, I, think we, I think this is the flyest thing ever. I think so, too. I like think we did it. John Favreau is definitely watching. And you should call us, because we Call we us got, now before someone else in and suddenly it snatches becomes up like a different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry I pitched the most expensive part. That's a no. Dexter Jester. Dexter Jester and animation is like, I'm kicking yeah. kicked out of the producer's Money's room. This no guy issue. sucks. No, yeah. Yeah. This is Disney Plus. Yeah, it's oh, Disney. Yeah, I it's forgot. Disney. I forgot. They will exploit as many visual effects artists to get this done on time as they need to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Mouse Gang, baby. Yep. The Mouse Gang, baby. Speaking of, I don't know, w w speaking of nothing, story number three, Tinder stream via Variety. <laughs> Dating app Tinder and bane of every stand-up comedian in Los Angeles is set to release a choose-your-own-adventure-style original series in early October, marking its first outing as a content financier and distributor. Numerous individuals close to the project told Variety, see, look what all of your super swipes did. <laughs> I've, full disclosure, mm -hmm. I've never used Tinder. Me neither. But Good. from what I've heard... <laughs> Isn't Tinder already kind of a choose your own adventure yes. type thing? Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just a choose your own adventure, but it's your actual life yeah. that you're dealing yeah. with. Right. So in a lot of ways, I don't necessarily like this this sounds to me like a safer way for you to experiment with the choose your own adventure <laughs> that is your life. Well, so the way that this oh, uh, uh, child correspondent is, is is highlighted something for me. Note for the more senior panelists, how dare you? <laughs> That's the, the services big. I feel like well. <laughs> the show will upload direct. <laughs> okay, so the series is set two against two more weeks, no camera. <laughs> <laughs> The series is set against an impending apocalypse and asks the question, who would you spend your last night alive with? Definitely a stranger. The show will upload <laughs> directly to the Tinder app and users will be able to swipe right or left in advance to advance the plot as they see fit. Note for the more senior panelists, that's the service's basic function of approving or denying a potential love. Oh, no, how it works. That's that stupid. The article, the second part. I oh, the yeah, part. That, was a, okay. that was a copy paste on Ryan's part. <laughs> Yeah, somebody, I don't remember who did, but someone called it like people solitaire, and that's probably my favorite description. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, like, we need more dehumanization wow. and mechanization of relationships. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah, that's what we need. The untitled six episode project just wrapped production in Mexico City and was directed by sought after newbie Karina Evans. I believe, uh, yes, yeah, she, I was just about to say this, I'm glad mm -hmm. you hit it. The Helmer, an actress, has directed numerous video music videos for rapper Drake, so she already knows what it's like to be in your feelings, including the viral <laughs> hit that one. And the star said yes. nice for what? She also directed the pilot episode of the star's stripper drama, P Valley. That's. <laughs> Haven't seen that one. I, I'm gonna just stop. I'm gonna guess what the P is. <laughs> <laughs> no word yet on how Bumble, Hinge, Plenty of Fish, Elite Singles, <laughs> eHarmony, J Date, or ChristianCafe.com will respond to the competition. <laughs> the streaming. What about uh, Farmers <laughs> Only? <laughs> we can, Ooh, we can yeah. assume that black people meet might come out. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, which is the one that everyone used to use? Uh, uh, that's not on here. Okay, Cupid. Okay, yeah, okay, Cupid. Is it gone? No, it's still around. Okay. We'll use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they've got like a whole oh. new marketing campaign. Well, some too. of our more junior members don't remember that. Yeah, to our junior, <laughs> we put the story together. Uh, our the, the junior members of the staff don't remember. Okay, Cupid. You're gonna be ringing bells forever. Yeah. What are you doing? No, and but uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Is this a dating sim? I don't think so. Because here's the thing about a dating sim. I mean, it is and it isn't. Because it's like. A dating sim, the the principle of the thing is that like you're at the center of this story and you have 
many options of people with whom you would like to pursue a romantic relationship. So, I mean, it kind of is. Like, it, it, <laughs> this is not that different from an Otome game in a lot of ways of like, here's your options. Yeah. Swipe right if you want to keep following this person's story. It's no... Swipe left if you want to kick them to the curb. Uh, it's no sexy KFC. It's no sexy. <laughs> Listen, I'm way more interested in sexy Colonel Sanders than I am in this. <laughs> but... <laughs> All right, one last question. Does setting the series against a literal apocalypse feel like the creators are embracing and winking at us all, asking, how the hell is Tinder making a series? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these are all signs of the apocalypse, you know? Yeah. And, I th and I think uh, Plenty of Fish is going to do a series on TikTok. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, so, it's a combo plate of awful all over the place. So I can see why, you know, this is a prime time for people who think the world's ending. Mm. <laughs> to, to sell their wares, you know? Uh, and I, I lied. Final, final last question. Mm -hmm. Dan, mm -hmm. you okay? I think this could be when we look back on the fall of Western civilization. <laughs> this show could be the hinge. When we look back, this is, that was the moment when everything changed forever. When it all falls down. Yeah. All right. You're watching it all fall down. Uh, join us in the comments. Let us know which dating app you would like to see have, us, <laughs> have had their own streaming service and join the streaming wars. And we will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.